Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Manson. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce our guest speakers today on Get to Know Your Competition. Uh, Rachel Zimmerman and Frank Zabrowski. I've had the um, honor of being involved with um, through um, what we have done at Cal Poly, what we did with LAUSD. Um, but the Cyber Patriot competition, to me, is the best high school cyber sport there is. It keeps growing. Um, it keeps adding new um, uh, uh, challenges to it. So I can't wait to hear what this year's finals included. And before I go any further, I am going to turn it over to Rachel and Frank. Welcome. Thank you uh, so much for having us here today. Uh, we're so excited to tell you a little bit more about Cyber Patriots. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so Cyber Patriot, we are the National Youth Cyber Education Program. Um, we are a program of the Air and Space Forces Association. Um, and as uh, Dan said, I'm Rachel Zimmerman. And with me today, I have Frank Zabrowski. Uh, we've both been with Cyber Patriot for over 10 years um, and have uh you know, seen the program grow from a few teams to a, a lot of teams, and we're here to tell you more about it. So one question you may have is, what is the Air and Space Forces Association doing with a high school cybersecurity competition? Um, well, AFA, we are a nonprofit organization. We started as the Air Force Association, so we still go by AFA. Um, but a couple of years ago, we adopted and changed to the Air and Space Forces Association to incorporate all of the Department of the Air Force now. Um, but one of our pillars is educate. And we really feel that um, we need more STEM professionals in the United States. Um, and that's a national security issue. And so our board of directors got together and said, what can we do to help solve that issue? Because we're behind in STEM. And they said, what about a rocket competition? And somebody said, I think there's already a couple of those. And somebody said, hey, what about cyber? And so that's how Cyber Patriot started. So I don't need to tell anybody on this call, I'm sure, about the need for more cybersecurity professionals. Um, so I'll kind of blow over this. But that is the problem that we are trying to solve. And so we do it through a fun competition um, to help inspire those students to go on and study STEM and cybersecurity fields. What we're not is hacker training. Our competition is strictly defensive. There is no offensive activity. And as we are a program for middle school and high school students, we feel that that's appropriate at that level for them. Um, will they learn or infer some things about offensive activities by learning how to defend them? Sure, but we stay strictly on the defensive side. We are also not as a recruitment tool for the Department of the Air Force or the DOD. Air Force and Space Force are in our names, um, but cyber is everywhere. It's a problem across all the industries. And so our goal is to recruit more people to go into cybersecurity. Some of them may go into the Air Force or the Space Force, but many of them are going to end up in industry. So these are an outline of the skills that students learn by competing in our competition. And many of them are what you would assume students in a cybersecurity competition would learn. Um, but we think equally as important are some of the non-technical skills that students learn, those soft skills that they're going to need later on. And that's the cyber ethics. You know, don't do something stupid when you're in high school that's going to prevent you from getting a security clearance one day. Um, leadership and teamwork, those are important skills that they're going to need. Um, as well as, you know, creative and analytical problem solving. So Cyber Patriot, what started as a high school cyber defense competition has grown into seven different programs. We're going to mainly focus on the National Youth Cyber Defense Competition, but I wanted to go over the other um, ones as well with you. Um, so we also have our AFA Cyber Camp Program, which is 20 hours of curriculum we sell to organizations who then want to hold um, camps in their local area. And we have that available in a standard camp for beginner students, as well as an advanced camp. Um, for individuals with prior knowledge about cybersecurity. We also have two elementary school programs. One of them is three free games anybody can download from our websites. The other is um, two children's literature series books that we've published, uh, Ben the Cyber Defender and Sarah the Cyber Hero. Um, those are available on Amazon um, in both ebook and uh, soft copy. 
Um, we also have two programs geared at teaching senior citizens how to stay safe online. We realize we have so many activities and knowledge um, that are geared towards middle school and high school students, but if we take those and we tweak them a little bit, we can also teach senior citizens how to stay safe online. You know, why should you not answer that Facebook quiz that's going to give away all of your password security hints? Um, you know, what are the various types of uh, phishing schemes or other things out there and how do you identify what a phishing email looks like, that type of stuff. And then we also have our alumni network, um, which we feel is really critical. Uh, so many of the students who enroll in Cyber Patriot, you know, they're enrolled with a high school or a middle school email address. Well, what happens when they graduate? That email address goes away. So we created a LinkedIn group that students could join and opt into. And then we have a way to keep in touch with them so that our sponsors, when they have internship opportunities, we can post those and past Cyber Patriot competitors can find them and, and uh, utilize those opportunities. So a little bit more about the cyber camps. Um, as I said, uh, it's five four-hour days, uh, 20 hours of curriculum. Um, again, uh, mostly held in person, but they are done virtually as well. We have them in the standard camp as well as advanced camp. There are about 300 camps last summer. Again, we have those three free uh, initiatives uh, available on our website. We call them init or, uh, interactive learning opportunities, but they're really games um, as a way to you know, introduce the topic of cybersecurity. And then those two books that I mentioned, and then the Cyber Generations materials, again, free for anybody on our website to, to download and view, or if you want to hold a, a workshop in your local area. We also have Tech Caregivers. This is where we take all of the students that are in Cyber Patriot and we equip them. How can they have conversations with those around them about how to stay safe online? And then that Cyber Patriot Alumni Network, um, we launched it two years ago, um, and we have, uh, I think, over a thousand members now because we just uh, advertised it to the latest group of graduating seniors, um, but again, growing that to get more students involved. So on to the competition. Um, it's geared towards middle school and high school students. Um, coaches register or organizations register. Many of them are at schools, but it can be op it's open to any youth organization. Um, and we have online training materials and then teams compete in our online competitions. So a bit about the registration side and then I'll hand it over to Frank to talk more specifically about the competition and to walk you guys through a demo. Um, the core of the team is the coach. That's the adult leader of the team. That individual does not need to be technically savvy. Um, we've had English teachers make it to our national finals before. Um, they just have to be the administrative lead for the team. And each coach can have up to five teams registered to them. Next is the technical mentor. Um, those, those coaches who aren't technically savvy, um, this is where they get that assistance. And these are industry professionals or college students maybe who um, want to beef up their resume or give back to their local communities. And so they volunteer as mentors and help teach the students what they need to know for the competition. Every team and mentor relationship looks a little differently. Um, some mentors are very involved and want to be at every practice. Other mentors are like, I can give you a one hour lecture once a month. And teams are just as happy to have that as well. Um, next, we have team assistants. These are kind of the soccer moms of the cyber patriot world. Somebody who's not technically savvy, but can do Google research with the best of them or help organize, you know, show up on the competition weekends with the Mountain Dew and the pizza, um, that type of thing. And then we have the competitors. These are the students. Each team is allowed up to six competitors and five of those competitors can compete at one time in the online rounds. Um, and then they don't need to have cybersecurity knowledge beforehand. Uh, Cyber Patriot will sort of walk them through and introduce them. We have three divisions in our competition. We have our open division, which is open to any high school aged competitors. Uh, as again, I said, it's mostly high schools, but it could also be uh, 4-H clubs, boys and girls clubs, um, scouting units. Uh, we actually had a scouting unit make it to the national finals in our middle school division this year. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then our all service division, uh, this is kind of the roots of Cyber Patriot and how it started. We, as the Air Force Association, had uh, connections to Civil Air Patrol and Air Force Junior ROTC. And so way back in 2009 and 2010, we asked them to help pilot the program to see if this concept was going to be successful. And it was. Um, and so then we expanded that and we've kept an all service division just for the junior ROTCs from the various services, as well as Civil Air Patrol and then U.S. Navy. Sea Cadet Corps. 
And then we have our middle school division, which we added a few years later. And that's open to any middle school age uh, youth organization or school. There is a small registration fee for teams that want to compete. Um, it's $225 for the uh, high school, $175 for the middle school, but we are generous with our fee waivers. Um, we are trying to encourage more females to join, so we have a fee waiver for an all-female team, um, and we'll also waive the fee if it's a Title I school, um, which are based at low um, economic areas. This is uh, the competition schedule from this past season, and this kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like. Um, something new we added this year was um, we changed the, the trajectory for middle school teams and high school teams. Um, one of the feedbacks that we received was that in the middle school division, it takes the teams a little bit longer to form because middle school clubs just take a little longer to form. And so we uh, we started their competition a little later and that allowed more time for them to train and form uh, prior to starting the competition. Um, we also added days to the competition this year. So teams um, where they just had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the past, they now had Thursday through Monday. Um, we're doing some feedback forms to see, are we going to keep that in the future? Or are we going to modify that a little bit? But there's four online rounds of competition. Teams do it from their home locations. And then our only in-person competition is the uh, national finals competition. So each team is a little different. Uh, some teams um, choose to, uh, you know, most teams I would say meet once a week, um, but some teams are more competitive. Sorry, I guess my cat's trying to also join the Zoom if you can see her in the background. Um, so uh, other teams, uh, you know, like Civil Air Patrol especially, they, um, you know, maybe only meet once a month. So there's no one right, uh, you know, one size fits all. Cyber Patriot can be adapted to however your organization wants to join Cyber Patriot, however much time teams have. And we have teams who assign maybe competitors tasks or things to learn between the meetings if they can't meet in person as often. We also have a lot of teams who um, maybe assign different topics for their team, for a certain team member to learn and then train other members of their team on how to, how to do that particular area. That way that student not only is teaching uh, their fellow competitors, but they have to really know the competition and that element if they're going to teach others. And then a little bit of our program effectiveness. Every two years, we do an alumni survey that, that measures our effectiveness. How well are we doing in our overarching goal of drawing students to STEM education? And so we do that through an alumni survey. Uh, we're getting ready to do ours in 2024 uh, here in the next month. Um, and so 75% of students uh, from two years ago said that were still enrolled in high school said Cyber Patriot impacted their role or that they plan to go on to STEM education. Um, and 18% of them were undecided. And as somebody who went to college undecided, I completely get that. 91% um, of the students who are already enrolled in higher education or who are in the workforce are either working in a STEM field or studying in a STEM field. Um, and then we, when we asked the students, how much did your, uh, your participation in Cyber Patriot impact that goal? 80% of them said that it positively impacted their goal of going on to study STEM education. So we're doing what we set out to achieve. So a few registration deadlines for this year. Um, we just opened registration. Um, any teams that register before July 1st will get a 20% discount. Um, our registration deadline, that's the last day a coach can go in and register a team, is going to be October 2nd. Um, the last day to add competitors to that roster, that team, is going to be October 23rd. And then November 16th is the last day that you have to pay. So anybody who's interested, if you want to have a Cyber Patriot team, the first step is going onto our website and registering. You first create a volunteer registration, which is basically your login for our website. Then you go up to the upper right-hand corner, you say set comp competition sign-in, and you click create team, and you fill out that um, team form. And that's you know no commitment at that time. You can try it out, see if you like the competition, see if you can recruit team members, um, that type of stuff. Um, and then you go from there. And now we're uh, going to move on to what the students actually do in the competition. And so I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Frank Zabrowski. Thank you, Rachel. So the Cyber Patriot National Youth Cyber Defense Competition, 
uh, consists of three parts. The first part is a virtual operating system exercise where students have to find and fix vulnerabilities within an image. Now the image, it could be a Windows 10 operating system, an Ubuntu type operating system, a Windows Server operating system. There's about three or four different varieties that we use. As you can see on this slide, a student would go into the users within, let's say a Windows 10 image and see if the user has a password. If the user uh, has no password and the student gives the user a password, they get a point. If they don't give the password to the user, they don't get a point. And then the same thing goes on with uh, using things like uh, antivirus. If the students put an antivirus in an image, they get a point. If they lock it down too much, then points are taken away because the students can't use the services that they're supposed to provide. So what I'll do now is I'll show you our demonstration that we have for Cyber Patriot. The great thing about this demonstration is that it's only uh, an executable. It's not a, an image that's multiple gigabytes you have to download. It's about 50, uh, 50 megabytes. And I think, uh, I think that you'll see it's pretty easy to use. So the first thing is you bring up the screen and it's just clicking on an executable and I, I could show you right here. There we go, just click on this executable right here, Cyber Patriot Interactive Demo. Frank, I and don't, just... you're not sharing your screen. Ah, thought I did, okay. Get back there. The share button eluded me, thanks. So what will happen is that the students will uh, click on the executable and it will show up like this. And it says, do you want to do a shoot short tutorial? And if a student clicks yes, it will walk the students through how you actually compete in Cyber Patriot. And it's all done through uh, this demo. So it tells you all about Cyber Patriot. I uh, continue on uh, some instructions on how to use it. The first thing is, is that each team in Cyber Patriot, the team consists of six students, five can compete at a time. Each team has their own unique 12 character unique identifier. So it's assigned to them at the beginning of the season. It's kind of like their password, but that's how we identify the students when they log into an operating system image. Next, after they do that, the students have to go to a readme file. So you can see on a demo, it clicks it shows you where to click. So you click on the readme file and then the readme file uh, comes up, excuse me, and it tells you a little bit about what's going on in the image. Uh, next, we have a scoring report. It tells the students on how they're doing. And uh, the scoring report contains not only the points that they got, but what they got them for. In this case, a student had a penalty. They uh, lost five points. And then the next thing is uh, they got a security issue correct and they gained points. So between the two, you could see that the students are told what to do and then they're given uh, information on how to do it. But next we have our forensics questions. Our forensics questions are questions that the students have to uh, answer to deal with things such as hashes, uh, settings, uh, they have to do binary translations, and they have, and this is really hard, they have to get them absolutely correct by character. So spelling does count in a competition, which teachers would like to hear. So we tell the students that they start, they go into uh, the settings, And at the end of the competition uh, that the students go through, they have a certificate uh, that they can uh, print out. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, show you a little bit about the control panel. What the students will do is they'll go through Windows 10 into the settings, the security settings, and we tell them to go into control panel. And within this, 
they can find different things to earn points. Anything from user accounts, like I told you before about the passwords, they put a password on, they get a point. Uh, if they take a password off, they lose a point. Uh, programs and features, we put things in like evil program. You know, it's not really a malware because we don't want to put malware on school networks. And the students will get points by eliminating that. Uh, here we have local security policies the students could get into to earn points. And, and this is uh, all walked through within the demo. And here you have a password policy. And then the students have to do things like uh, enforce uh, password history. In other words, everybody hates having not to use a password uh, for the past 10 times, okay? You go to change your password for your bank, it says, oh, can't do that. You use you know, this password once in 10 times. Well, this is, shows the students how to do that on the demo. And during the competition, the students get points for doing that. Uh, other things get points for are the maximum password age. You know, do you change the password at 45 days, 90 days? Uh, everybody would like it to be, you could change it anytime you want, uh, but that's uh, not really as good cybersecurity uh, policy. Uh, next is the um, password must meet uh, complexity requirements. That's the one where you have to put in uppercase, lowercase symbol. And the students, by doing that, they earn points within the competition. And it's all explained uh, within the demo of uh, what the students should do. Uh, in here, on the minimum password age properties, so uh, the minimum password age, we have uh, local security setting, then an explanation up at the right side. And then the students change the input field here where it says days. Uh, when they're finished, they can hit the apply button and OK. So. For this demonstration, we do have something called a stop scoring button that's disabled within our competition. So what that means is everybody is working to earn the maximum possible points they can. When they feel that they're done with the competition, they can hit this stop scoring button and it stops, okay? The students don't have to have anxiety. They know that they have that score. Now, the problem we have is sometimes the students will say, well, let me open the image and check it again. Well, guess what? If something happened that was not a permanent change that they made, in other words, you can make changes that will just affect when you have that image open or when you have that operating system open. But if you close it and bring it up again, if you did not put the proper setting, it, it will go back to the default. So if they didn't do that, they'll lose points. But anyway, we do have the stop scoring button so the students know exactly what their scores will be. Okay, so... Uh, when they end the uh, Cyber Patriot demo, the students come up with uh, a certificate, and on the certificate, uh, they can enter their names, so on and so forth. So I'll show you real quick, uh, run through just a, a very short uh, demo, uh, talking about the things that we talked about just earlier in the tutorial. So this will pop up on the screen when students are repeating. Basically, it says, I will follow the rules. I will delete, delete my images when I'm finished. So students hit, I agree, continue. They enter their unique ID. Here it's one, uh, N, C, C, S, three, one, R, zero, W, three, two. So students enter that and it was successful. Now the students learn about, you know, putting in, is it an I, an L, a one, uh, when it comes to entering those unique IDs. The students come over to the readme file. It tells them all about what's going to happen in competition, the scenario, there are uh, a small company's IT section. They have to secure, they have security policies they have to enforce. Uh, these are the authorized users that are allowed to be on the computer. If there's a user account that's not supposed to be there, then the students uh, 
uh, will not gain points. If they delete that account because someone's not authorized to be on it, then they'll receive the points. So after the README, uh, the students, what they'll do, this will come down here, you see the arrow uh, pointing. They'll come over here to the control panel that will go to the uh, user accounts or local security accounts. So here on the manage user accounts, what the students will do is uh, they'll go to this list and bounce it off the list that we have for authorized users. So you can see uh, they'll run down the list and the list is uh, basically in alphabetical order. If they delete one, a user that's not supposed to be there, then they'll lose points. Or if they delete a user that is supposed to be there, they'll lose points. And you could hear, can you hear that in the background? Okay, well, there's a, an alarm that goes off <clears throat> that, that they've lost points. And it, it's uh, hilarious. Sometimes we get videos from students these are going off in the background because they're not paying attention. So we'll go to our scoring report over here and we can see the students have two penalties. They removed uh, not only the user, they removed the authorized user directory because when I, when I deleted it, I deleted everything for that user. So they have a penalty and they have a loss there. Uh, the students could go on uh, on the demo. They earn up to a hundred points. And uh, through, this, uh, through this process, this process that they can learn how to compete in Cyber Patriot, but also if they decide not to, they can learn a little bit about cybersecurity principles and how to apply them to their uh, operating systems at home. So uh, Rachel, that's uh, about all I have right now. I'll turn it back over to you. Well, Frank, you, you talked a lot about the um, the competition component, the the image component of Cyber Patriot, but there's a few other aspects that we've added. Um, one of them is the Cisco Netacad challenge. Can you talk a little bit about what students do during competition with that Cisco Netacad challenge? And you're still muted, Frank. Frank, you're still muted. The challenge for Cisco is based on two things. One is a quiz that the students take based on materials they're given to study. The students have months to study this, these materials, everything from IP addresses to how to connect routers and switches together on a network. Uh, the students have to learn command line and it, it goes through the competition, which is basically one a month between October and January on the online rounds. And then, uh, the second part of that will be that the students do a simulator called Packet Tracer, which is shows a network that's simulated. And when students connect a router and switch together, the network actually comes up green between a router and a switch. The national finals competition, which is an in-person competition at the uh, end of our online season, uh, the thing that Cisco does there is they add what we call a hands-on exercise where the students don't do a simulator. They actually go on to Cisco equipment uh, vir uh, virtually. In other words, it's not there, it's in North Carolina, but they're using command lines and they're using the information that they learn throughout the season to uh, basically secure a network. The other uh, competition that we have uh, this in a season is the Boeing Challenge. It's a cyber physical systems challenge where students protect aviation uh, data from being corrupted or hacked. And the students are uh, in their platinum tier. Uh, we're given this the first year. Now all tiers are given this. In other words, from the highest uh, level of competition uh, to our lowest level of competition for the high school. And the students are given a, a group of questions and a scenario where they have to go in and they have to protect someone from taking flight data and that would possibly cause an aircraft to go off course. The next thing is that we have uh, uh, during our national competition, national finals competition, we have a, a lot of things to do at one time. So during the online rounds, students may get two to four operating systems to operate on. However, at the national finals, they get eight. And oh, by the way, during the competition season, they have four hours to do, you know, 
two, three, four operating systems. Well, at the national finals, they have three and a half hours, not only to do that, but they have a red team that's actually attacking them at the same time. Then on top of that, we give them extra forensics questions that they have to answer. And then we give them what we call injects, which are this year, the inject was that they had no internet access for the first 20 minutes of the competition. So anything they wanted to download offline, they weren't able to do it. And it tells us who the good teams are. They're able to work without having to go to Google. They, they understand what they're supposed to do. Uh, at the national finals competition, uh, Boeing uh, has a super cyber fiscal systems challenge there where they've added on to the online rounds and to protect that aviation data. And then uh, Cisco, again, they have their hands on competition. So the big thing about our competition is that we understand that not all teams, not all students are the same skill set level. So what we will do is we will take uh, the students from their total scores from round one and two, they all compete the same way. We add them together and we decide uh, from looking at the top 30% that those teams will be in what we call the platinum tier. Those teams will go on to compete for our national finals competition. Our teams that are on the uh, middle 40% are in the gold tier and that tier is a tier that uh, they have fairly hard images, fairly hard Cisco, but they're not gonna go to the national finals competition. And then the remaining 30% are our um, lowest tier as well as middle school. And they get the same challenges uh, that they don't get the Boeing challenge uh, in the national finals. Uh, they, you know, they have, it, they have it kind of easier at the middle school, but the silver tier does, does get that Boeing challenge that I talked about. So we, we tried to make the competition uh, fair, we try to make it friendly to the students. We know it causes anxiety because a lot of our students are college bound, but even the ones that aren't, uh, we're really happy to have. You know, they have pizza parties. They don't care if they're number one or number 500 out of a thousand or 5,000 teams. They, they just don't care. So when it comes to the SAR Patriot competition, uh, we can scale a lot. We've uh, started from, you know, humble beginnings uh, all the way up to this year, over 5,200 teams. And our uh, server uh, system is our secret sauce. And that's put together by our uh, partner, the uh, Center for Information Assurance and Security at the University of Texas at San Antonio, who have been a really great part of our program. So Rachel, I, I could turn it over to you, I think. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And uh, like you mentioned, there's, you know, over 5,000 teams that registered um, and CIS who, who, who does that secret sauce for our competition. They also run the collegiate cyber defense competition. Um, and we've had teams of students who, you know, did cyber Patriot and went on to start um, clubs at their, at their colleges and universities that go on and compete in CCDC. Um, in fact, a couple of years ago, we had a team of, of former Cyber Patriot competitors who went on and, and started that, and they actually won the CCDC competition. Um, and their school had never had a CCDC before, but it was because it was those former Cyber Patriot competitors who were like, hey, high school's not enough, I want to keep on doing this, um, that went on and, and, and did that. So a lot of our students go on to that. I mean, like Frank said, we we do divide them into those tiers. And we award um, at the state round, which is our third round of competition, we award tons of awards to the top teams in each tier, in each state, in each of those divisions. Um, and that's so that we can recognize teams for their hard effort. Um, only 28 teams get to go on to our national finals competition. But again, we're all about inspiring teams. So, you know, we have those tiers. It's a lot more work for us, but it's also not going to, it allows us to still challenge the teams that are more advanced while not frustrating the teams that aren't as advanced. We don't want somebody to walk away from this and go, I clearly, you know, we only scored a 10 on that image. So cybersecurity is not for me. Um, we, we don't want that as, a, as an outcome. We want to inspire students to go on to cybersecurity. So that's why we created that tier system um, and why we create the extra work for ourselves to do that. Um, I saw a couple um, questions in the chat that I'll go on um, and address, but if anybody has other questions, feel free to drop them in there and we'll address them as we go. Hi, Rachel. Um, uh, this oh, is Dan. Quick, sure. quick yeah. question. Fantastic presentation. Are you able to share your slides with us? Absolutely, sure. Great.
And there, you have a couple of questions in the chat related to um, summer camp. Do you have program outcomes? We do have some. Um, again, it, it's so cyber camps. We sell the curriculum to organizations who then host the camps in their local areas. Uh, we do collect some some feedback um, from camps. Um, how how much did you, you know? How would you rate your knowledge coming into the camp versus how do you rate your knowledge on this subject leading out of the camp? Um, in just a moment, I can find it and share. Um, we do a. Um, a, a post camp um, report each year um, and it shows that students knowledge increased and so just like Frank walked through the different stuff we have um, one section of our standard camp that's all about Windows operating systems and the next set of our camp is about um, Linux operating systems Ubuntu and we give the students um, demonstration images so as the teachers are talking about password policy they have hands-on time to actually go in there and set the password policy as they're learning about um, you know Linux command line, they're in there doing the command line. Um, and it gives them the hands-on opportunity. But then they also have a competition image where it's just like a mini Cyber Patriot competition. They get to put all that they learned throughout the week to the test for that. Um, and so I can share, um, we don't have as much detail on the camps as we do um, on the competition, um, but we do have a, a report that we publish each year. And again, it shows students learned a lot by participating in our camp. Um, I see somebody else asked um, about what does it take to be involved? So we sell the curriculum. It's up to that host organization then. So you get the PowerPoint slides. You get an instructor guide that'll kind of walk you through everything along with a script, um, you know, a suggested script so that if you're not as knowledgeable about cybersecurity, but you still want to host a camp, it kind of lets you know what, what you should be talking about on each of the slides. Um, and then those demonstration images and the competition images. The camp host is then responsible for in providing the instructors for the camp, um, for providing the equipment the students will um, do during the, like, you know, utilize during the camp. Um, they handle registration for the camp. So we have some camps that are out there for 10 students because that's what their organization can um, do and host and, and done. We have other ones that are, you know, been doing this a couple of years and they're going to have multiple classrooms going on and they're going to have 300 students at their camp. Both of those are great. Um, you pay for the week that you host the camp and however many uh, camps you have happening during that week, that's up to the organization to see how, how many students can they support. Um, so you go from there. So they provide the instructors, they provide registration, they provide the equipment um, and, and the space. However, people want to augment the camp, they can. Again, we suggest five, four hour days, but sometimes they bring in guest speakers um, to talk to the students during lunch. Sometimes they add campus tours in there. Sometimes they add other things like that. Um, we do have one stipulation that you can't use our cyber camp as a money making um, venture. And so you can be you can recover the cost of putting on the camp, but you can't necessarily use it to go out there and make money. Um, but otherwise, variety of organizations choose to host cyber camps. Registration is open through May 1st. You choose the week. We have nine weeks that you can host a camp basically from early June to mid-August um, we have available um, all except the week of 4th of July because most people don't want to host um, camps during the 4th of July week um, so we take that week off um, but you get again everything that goes along with that. Great we have a question um, are there any aspects of the competition related to space? Um not the cyber patriot um competition we have a sister competition um that afa also runs called stellar explorers um and what we do cyber patriot does for um cyber security stellar explorers does for space um i think that's what you're talking about um yeah. but uh, it, they talk about satellite design um launch determination uh, or orbit determination okay. um, all of those types of uh aspects it's it, it looks and feels very much like Cyber Patriot because they took our model of a uh, team organization um, and other things and they adopted it, but their topics are all geared towards space. Um, and so they have a similar competition structure. Uh, they're just getting ready to host their national finals competition um, in the uh, Denver area. 
later this month. Um, so that's called Stellar mm -hmm. Explorers. And I would encourage anybody to check that out if, you, if students are interested would, in space. Would they touch on space cybersecurity? They don't um, touch upon that, but it's interesting. Um, Stu Pettis, who's our boss, um, you know, he was lining up some um, tours for the teams that came to Stellar Explorers finals two years ago. Um, and he reached out to an organization who was working on the, the new lunar lander. And they said their number one issue is cybersecurity. Um, and so he was very much interested in Cyber Patriot because, again, cyber is going to touch all, all sorts of things. But they don't we don't get into the aspect. They don't get into that aspect of um, space at all. Thank you. What advice do you have for colleges that want to partner with high schools? Um, I mean, I think that it has great opportunities for both the college and the high school. Um, it will definitely assist the students, maybe um, college students who want to give back and mentor. It'll help beef up, beef up their resume so that when they go and apply for jobs, they can list their Cyber Patriot mentor experience as that. We've seen a number of different um, colleges partner with high school students, um, whether that's through camps or whether that's through the competition. Each of them looks a little different depending upon sort of what the local ecosystem looks like um, and how that's successful. Um, but there's a variety of different ways that um, that, that, that those partnerships happen. Um, and we see a lot of, you know, synergy. Hey, you know, we had mentors from this university. And so when I applied for college, I went on and applied there. Um, or our, this uh, university hosted different workshops and I got to go uh, you know, to a, a once monthly workshop on cybersecurity to help my Cyber Patriot team. Um, and I really loved that campus. Uh, Frank, do you wanna add anything to that? Or do you have anything to add to that? Mute, unmute Frank. The community colleges are really active. And I, I can tell you that if you're a high school and you can snag a community college, uh, they not only give you places to compete, they give you mentorship, and they, have, they also want the students to go to the community college. And uh, we have Gannon University and Emory-Riddle University as two of our sponsors, as well as uh, University of Maryland Global Campus. And uh, they really, um, put it out there with giving scholarships to the students with Gannon University, our national finals competition. Uh, Embry-Riddle has given uh, uh, scholarships in the past and uh, University of Maryland Global Campus is a, a financial contributor to us because they believe in our program. Um, I know I wasn't asked, but I would like to jump in. Uh, Curtis Carpenter, Cal Poly Pomona, I coach our uh, CCDC team and several of our members uh, participated in Cyber Patriot. Um, some of them are from Troy High School, some of them for, from Del Norte. And they, every year, they give back by uh, helping out local schools. And as Rachel mentioned, one of the things uh, uh, that happens as a result of that are many of the students end up applying and coming to Cal Poly based on uh, their interaction, um, you know, from help with Cyber Patriot. So it's, it's a wonderful program. Well, thank you. It's always nice to hear those those success stories. Um, and that's one of the reasons we started that alumni network was to be better engaged with our students once they once they graduate from high school and no longer compete um, and keep track of them. Um, whenever we need a little pick me up or, you know, it's a long competition weekend, we'll log on to that LinkedIn group and kind of scroll through and and see all of the great places that our, our alumni have gone on um, and, and what they're doing now. Where Indiana. were the finals? Where were the finals this year? Uh, so they're held at the uh, Bethesda North Marriott Hotel and Conference Center uh, in Rockville, Maryland, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. Um, and that's where we'll be for the next uh, several years. And our, our national finals are usually uh, mid-March. 
um, for the, the competition. And I know Frank and his team, they already sent me a draft schedule for next year. So we're already working on next year's um, competition. We have registration open. Um, we have, uh, you know, mentors, if anybody wants to register and volunteer as a mentor, um, we do put everybody who, who does that through a background check, just so that we're ensuring, you know, we're linking you up to, to work with middle school and high school students. Um, but we have mental registration open year round. Um, and Frank and his team are already working on the competition schedule for next year um, and hoping to get that that set. But I'm sure it'll look similar to what we've done the past couple of years. Um, it's hard to avoid everybody's fall breaks, spring breaks, um, the various uh, SAT, ACT, uh, federal holidays, all of those things. So uh, but we're working through what the competition schedule will look like. We don't have an exhibit hall uh, for employers or colleges to recruit at, at our national finals competition. We do have an event uh, for our sponsors uh, to speak with the students that are at our national finals competition um, and, and sort of uh, talk to them about their futures and maybe where they want to go to um, college, uh, maybe where they, what career field they might want to go into um, as well. But those are only open to the right now to the uh, the organization to financially support the, the program and help us continue to do what we do. Um, we also have a, um, a newsletter that we publish monthly uh, where we, you know, focus on our alumni where we provide competition information. Um, we also allow our sponsors to um, kind of have that national audience and, and talk about things uh, maybe that the, the students or the teachers uh, for Cyber Patriot are also relevant to them. Um, but it's not open um, beyond just the, the handful of our, of our sponsors. Um, we've looked at doing it, but we are limited on the amount of space that we have available and the amount of time that we have the students as well. Um, I will say those students, when they're at finals before the competition, they are also very focused on the competition um, and getting them to pay attention or do other things um, is sometimes a challenge as well. Any other questions that we can answer while we're here? What kind of media coverage do you look for? You know, we have, we, we provide um, different uh, like templates that, that, that teams can take to their local newspapers to advertise that they're participating in Cyber Patriot. Um, you know, Frank mentioned, or I mentioned the awards um, that we give. So the, the top, we see more media coverage for the top silver team in a particular state because those students at that level are just as proud um, of their team and their accomplishments as, um, you know, the, 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 28 teams that make it to our national finals competition. So we try to provide um, templates for teams to help advertise that they're participating in Cyber Patriot in their local areas and reach out to their local, uh, you know, media outlets. And, you know, we, we were featured on the Today Show um, probably five years ago now. Um, we've had, you know, national coverage before. Um, but again, a lot of it is at that local level um, to help advertise either uh, um, what the, the teams are doing or the camps or different partnerships or things like that as well. Thank you. Absolutely. If we had additional questions, uh, who on the, the call would we reach out to or do we reach out directly to Cyber Patriot or... Yeah, you can reach out directly to Cyber Patriot, um, info, I-N-F-O, at uscyberpatriot.org um, is the best place uh, to direct a question. Um, and then from there, it'll it'll go on to either the competition staff, to Frank or myself, um, and we're happy to uh, you know answer all the questions that we get. Um, I'd say email me, but sometimes my inbox gets a little overwhelmed. Um, so <laughs> directing them to info will probably get you a faster answer um that been emailing me directly okay thank you absolutely and we also have a if you go to our website the contact us section there's a, a phone number that you can call as well um and we're happy to walk uh, you know talk to anybody about questions they have specific to camps or specific to the competition um and uh you know happy to to walk people through that as well the middle thank school you. level is that growing and you ever think about elementary school? 
Well, we have two elementary school programs, but they're not competitions like we have um, for the middle, for the high school. Um, I don't think we're looking to expand to the elementary school for um, competition components, um, just because we already have a, a lot of variety that we work with at the high school, middle school level. Um, the Growth has been a challenge for us uh, post COVID. Um, we were on a, a, a very upward trajectory. Um, we had 6,000, uh, nearly 7,000 teams that registered for our competition um, and then COVID hit. And we've sort of been plateaued at about five, just over 5,000 teams since then. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the state I, of education and how much I'm teachers are being asked to, um, to to take on. And so um, we haven't seen a lot of growth. Uh, where we have seen it is in that open division. We've seen some growth in the middle school division. Um, I think that some people are hesitant to start Cyber Patriot because they feel that they're doing it alone. And so having um, community support will encourage more teams to join. If there's a coach who's thinking about doing it, but is like, man, if I have to go at this alone and teach the students what they need to know and have all the resources and computers and the other things that they need, um, that's a lot for a single coach to take on. But if they're like, hey, I have this local resource, this community, this college in my in my town that's offering to hold workshops or provide mentors or, um, you know, mentors that are local to them, they're more likely to take it on and help the students um, than if they have to go at it alone. So we haven't seen much growth in the middle school level. Um, one thing we have uh, seen that's been successful is um, high schools who have programs have reached out to their feeder middle school programs or their feeder middle schools to set up cyber patriot teams so that when the students come to high school, that's not their first introduction to cyber uh, patriots. They've already had people that have done it at that middle school level. And so they're not starting from scratch with team members. Maybe there's three new team members, but two experienced ones. And so we've seen that um, as a way that the middle school division has grown um, as well. No more questions? Rachel, Frank, we really, really appreciate everything you do. I personally, have had the opportunity to be involved in Cyber Patriot, and it makes a huge difference. We were able to get students with hands-on cyber and passion coming into college because of your program. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, we so enjoy doing these and and uh, I will definitely share um, my slides that we utilize as well as a link to the demo that Frank walks you guys through um, with you all. And thanks, Dan, for all you've done for the program, too. You've been one of our supporters. I know you're Professor Emeritus now, but uh, we sure appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. It's, it's, it was it was a no-brainer for me because when I saw what was going on in high school, I thought those are the students we want in our program. You know, the, the ability for students to develop before college is absolutely what we need. All right. All um, right. This is time to end the call, but uh, look forward to staying in touch. And keep can I say one more thing? I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dan. Uh, this is Curtis. Um, I just want to just briefly talk about how I learned about SIPAD. Um, I, I hire a lot of IT student assistants uh, on campus, and I kept getting resumes, and there was a distinct difference between uh, the certain group of people that I was receiving resumes from. Some of them had... Uh, professional certi certifications or just like really high skill sets. And I'm looking at them and they're like freshmen. And I'm wondering how in the world are they learning this? And so finally during my interviews, I had to start asking them like, how are you learning this? You just started. And they all told me they they did Cyber Patriot in high school. And that was that's how I found out about it. It's super impressive. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Uh, good note to wrap on. Um, and we'll be uh, doing more of these in the future, but I hope that some of the people on the call today, if they're not involved with Cyber Patriot, jump in.
it's it's really worthwhile all right um i'm gonna go ahead and end the call <laughs>